Hello, my name is David Bogle, and I'd like to welcome you to the Museum of Native American History in Bentonville, Arkansas. I'm Native American. I'm registered Cherokee and very proud of it. A little bit about our museum. We're an art museum. And what you'll see are some of the finest pieces, the highest quality pieces of Native American craftsmanship, of art made from North America to South America. But just as importantly, we're a history museum. We're set up in a chronological order. So as you go through a museum, you start with the Paleo, the oldest time period, the time of the Paleo Indians that were hunting mammoths and mastodons. And you go through the archaic time periods of the hunters and gatherers. <laughs> Clovis fluted points are considered to be the oldest flint artifacts on this continent. They are unique to the Americas. When you look at the Clovis point, you'll notice a groove, or flute channel, running right down the middle of them. This channel makes it easier to attach to a spear or knife. Clovis fluted projectile points are one of the hardest point types to make with any degree of success, and were often broke during manufacture. Artifacts have been discovered at sites in Monte Verde, Chile, that have dates which archaeologists believe could be even older than Clovis. Birdstones are found east of the Mississippi River Valley. Most of them came from the northeastern states. There are many unique variations in forms. Although we call them birdstones, it's possible the makers could have intended for some of them to be called other animals that were important to them. Birdstones are one of the great mysteries of prehistoric Native America. Each of these abstract stone carvings has holes on the bottom, presumably for mounting. Some archaeologists believe they were used for atlatl weights, but no one really knows for sure. Some could have been used for decoration, status symbols, or had a specialized utilitarian function. Through the woodland time period of when early man started farming and into the Mississippian times where they became more advanced and more socialized, cities started to develop. This bird effigy platform pipe is a classic example of their skill and artistry. It was manufactured by a Hopewell culture Indian in southern Illinois from a solid block of red catlinite stone. This ceramic vessel is known as a Havana Zone stamp jar, one of the most rare of pottery types. Usually woodland pottery does not last this long, and it is very rare to see one in this well-preserved condition. The decoration was made by carving and using stamps made of carved wood or clamshell, and impressing them into the soft clay vessel before putting into a fire to harden. This type of decorated pottery is called Nashville Negative and was used on late Mississippian sites. This water bottle was found at the Crossno site in Mississippi County, Arkansas. It was decorated in a unique and rare fashion called Negative Resist. To accomplish negative images, the design was not painted, but the background itself was. A resistant substance was applied, and when the vessel was fired, the design would appear in coloration consistent with the original clay. This gorget was found at the Parkin site in Cross County, Arkansas. It is made from a solid sheet of hammered copper with two holes for suspension around the wearer's neck. Embossed on the surface is a spider motif, a very important symbol to many Native American cultures. For the Mississippian people, the spider is usually indicative of a female and is thought to represent fertility, balance, and the center of the earth. This pot represents a young spotted white-tailed deer in a nesting position. The Quapaw Indians along the Mississippi River Valley use French or Spanish kettles as a model for some of their ceramic vessels and added the animal forms for a more personal touch. There were 28 of these effigy axes found in a pile of woven mat inside the Craig or Great Mound at Spyro. Many of these axes were broken up or incomplete. This is one of the few that were found intact. This is the only axe of its type that exists in private collections and is considered one of the rarest prehistoric artifacts found in North America.
And then we finish with our last gallery of the historic time, the time after European contact. In Eastern North America, wooden pipe bowls were made from southern New England throughout the Great Lakes region to Minnesota, but only relatively few specimens have remained intact. This extraordinary pipe is carved from maple wood, and it depicts a reclining man with a slightly open mouth that is believed to signify speech or singing. Reportedly, this pipe once belonged to Tecumseh. Some clubs were more than just an instrument used in battle. Many of them served a ritualistic role in dances or ceremonies. With intricately carved features, it is too fragile to have endured the abuse of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The figure represents a wolf with an open mouth, sharp teeth, and the protruding blade is thought to represent a tongue. This club may relate to the existence of wolf clans in all tribes of the Great Lakes region, or to the frequent devotion to wolf spirits by the warriors, who used to sing wolf songs while on the warpath. I started from a small museum that I had built in my home in 2006, and in 2008 we acquired this building. We have added onto this building four times, and we continue to expand not only our building, but our collection. And that's what we really do here. We use these fine pieces of art, but we teach history. People ask me all the time why I started this collection, why I started this museum. And for me, it's about that word Indian. What we try to do at the museum is we try to dispel that automatic picture that goes into everybody's head whenever the word Indian comes up. We can't help it. Movies, TV, it's all done to us. But what we try to do here is to expand your horizons, expand your knowledge, to experience all the history about what it took, the hardships, the joys that occurred to get us where we are today with me visiting with you.